a group of us took an excursion into the Papua New Guinea uh, Bougainville jungle to look at some uh, uh, World War II battle sites that Dave Faulkner's father fought in uh, in, in the Second World War. Dave, Fal Dave Faulkner's father fought in many of the major battles in the Pacific, uh, Guadalcanal, Gavutu, Vela La Vela, Bougainville, New Guinea, uh, Iwo Jima, and he is in the, in, the, in the book Flags of Our Fathers. He, he fought with a very specialized uh, uh, group of Marines, and I, had the, I was very fortunate to, to uh, uh, have him as a friend and spend some time with him in, in the jungle. Now, one of the uh, conversations that Dave and I and his father have had over the years was he claimed one of the, one of the toughest battles that he was in was in the jungles of Bougainville because of the climate, the insects, the snakes, the spiders, the, uh, uh, the environment, plus a, a very uh, vicious enemy. So we all went there with, uh, 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 to look at the battle sites, and there was a bunch of us, uh, most of them were here. Uh, uh, you guys worked with them. There was only a couple people missing. One of them was one of the Navy SEALs that we brought with us. Uh, there was two Navy SEALs that we brought with us because, uh, there was no white people allowed, uh, or they were not recommending that white people would go into that area because of the unrest with the villages, and they were uh, there was a lot of unrest with the, they were chopping. Am I right in saying, Andy, that they were chopping people's heads off and stuff? Yeah, there's been a lot of violence and you know, burning down villages and people getting murdered and uh, people just disappearing uh, without a trace. And uh, yeah, that's the environment we were headed into. So that was one of the reasons that we took two, two Navy uh, SEALs with us. Um, one of them was here during this time, and the other one <laughs> uh, fell off, I, I don't mean to laugh, because he <laughs> fell, fell off a roof and broke his leg. So he was unable to come with us. So during that trip, uh, we looked at many of the different battle sites that Mr. Faulkner fought at, and um, Andy, our, our, our guide here and friend of ours, uh, was walking around the site, stepped in the mud, and what popped out of the mud was a gold tooth. Um, we were all excited because, uh, you know, I mean, where'd the gold tooth come from, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And we took a picture of that gold tooth, and um, the, immediately the, the native chief who owned the property, you'll see a picture of him, a, a nasty looking guy, scary, um, wanted the tooth, so we had to give it back to him. And eventually I got it back nine months later, but um, uh, Andy, uh, Andy's the, the one that, that, that discovered it, but he looked into uh, that type of tooth with photographs, and I did as well, and it came out to, um, without people knowing where it came from or whatever, it was determined that that tooth was very old, um, uh, could have been made in the 40s, 30s, or 40s. Am I right, Andy? Right. And it was a, a type of, of uh, tooth uh, replacement that only somebody of very high rank at that time would have been able to uh, acquire. So it came from somebody that was way up the ladder in terms of importance in the, in the Japanese hierarchy. So. so we have reason to believe that it, it could very well be Yamamoto's tooth. Yamamoto was the, for those of you young people who don't know who young Yamamoto was, he was the architect of the attack on Pearl Harbor. He was like a god in, in, in Japan uh, um, society. And um, uh, he planned uh, the, the attack and he did not want to uh, uh, do war with the United States because he, he spent two years at Harvard and, the, and he knew uh, how powerful and the industrial might that the United States had uh, versus Japan. But being a well-trained, disciplined a Japanese officer, he did what he was told. So we have reason to believe that the tooth that Andy discovered could very well be uh, Yamamoto's tooth. And that's what, so what we're doing, uh, is making a, a we made a make a documentary that um, uh, Tim, are you here? I'm here. Yes. Okay. Tim uh, is one of the fellows that was with um, he's with the World War II 
uh, Foundation, him and a retired Marine general who left uh, today, his name is Drew, you, you, you uh, waited on him, took good care of him, and uh, got involved with this uh, uh, program. He's very excited about it and thinks that this too could be, uh, it's very possible that it could be Yamamoto's tooth. And if that's the case, the discovery is just something for historians would just be amazing. Um, so it's, it's um, hopefully we're going to have it on PBS and Memorial Day 2019. Uh, Veterans Day next year. Veterans Day next year. And hopefully uh, Tom Selleck um, is going to be narrating it. So the, the, what you've seen here in the last few days is the foundation of something that could be very interesting, very important in history and, nice. and could be shown nationwide uh, in a short period of time. But we're going to show you a, a, a brief 20 minute film of uh, what Andy and, and David uh, uh, took of part, part of this journey. So I hope you enjoy it. And if there's any questions later, and I hope we don't bore you. You didn't have to see this. If, I just thought perhaps you may, maybe that you were interested to see what the hell's going on with all these people around here. So uh, this that's what we've been doing.